Alright, so here's some uh, quarter inch, I think it's slightly less, maybe one sixth, uh, I mean, 2.9 millimeters thick. Um, no, 2.2, 2.2, right? I'm not sure. Um, some kind of aluminum plate. Uh, I want to put it onto my AZ GTI. That's, uh, it's going to hold the polar scope uh, on these. Well, these are like drill guides, but on these holes here. And I made this little cutout jig. So I'm just going to transcribe it onto this piece of metal. And let me get this out of the way. So, the first step is just to figure out what direction we want to go. I'm just going to use this naturally straight edge to you know, save myself some cutting. And once I get it pretty lined up, I should probably use a square for this, but it doesn't need to be exact. I gave myself good tolerance on this, because there's no way I'm going to be able to cut all this other stuff uh, perfectly straight. I'm just going to give it a little clamp and get it nice and adjusted. <clears throat> I actually should use some tape for this, I guess. Okay, now it won't move so easily. Um, probably tape it a few more spots here. This is just some gaffer's tape. It's alright, it's not the best I've ever owned. I use it pretty sparingly because it's not the best. So, now we just do a little wiggle test. It's pretty good. So, now we got that. Um, I'm just going to want to make a little drill guide here. So we're just going to drill one of these holes first. And then we can put a bolt through there. And that should keep us pretty steady. Then we'll work on this one. I'm just doing some double checking here. Looks good. So this is just a nail. I don't have a, a drill set or whatever the heck it's called. Um, just makes a little divot in the metal and I should be able to drill it. So we should start with a small bit probably. I think I have maybe one set up in the drill already. So yeah, why not just use it? Alright, I went ahead and drilled all the holes out, um, even these four little ones. Uh, they might need to be drilled out more, but I can wait on that. Um, this filament melted really easily um, with the drill bit. I've never really had that much problems using PLA as a drill bit jig. Obviously the friction makes it really hot really quick, but um, this, this filament just really melted very quickly. But I was drilling pretty pretty hard, um, but anyway, they're all in there. They all look good. I took a bigger drill bit and just knocked off the burrs on them. Just not these two yet. I I used a file before, but it occurred to me I could just use a, a, a bigger drill bit to, to grind that off. So I'm just going to go ahead and trace it and then cut it out. Um, Alright, uh, it's a scroll saw. I've got some neoprene rubber under there and a clamp to try and hold it still. It likes to slide across my work desk. Uh, it's rated for wood and uh, plastic, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut this metal with it. Um, the aluminum's kind of soft, so I think it'll go through it. I did a little test cut. Um, it started going through it pretty pretty good. It's very loud, um, so I'm just going to mute that later, hopefully. Um, if I don't remember to do that, I'm sorry.
as you can see it's cutting it I'm going to uh, uh I can't cut straight for anything but uh I'm just gonna cut it and I'll show you when it's done I guess and we'll test it out okay so uh yeah um you cut it 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 didn't mess it up that much um it's pretty sharp and jagged on the bottom I think this is a wood blade no it might be the plastic blade but uh yeah it uh it, it was able to do it it's uh kind of funny it looks like I didn't cut it but but I did and this thing cuts uh really nice so I like it I'm sure this blade's toast after this I mean I don't think it has any teeth left on it but you know it's doing it they're cheap whatever all right, so I cut this out and I sanded it with a Dremel and well, not sanded it, but took the burrs off of it with a file on Dremel. Um, so now it's not as sharp and uh, I don't have these ridges on the side that that saw made. As you can see, it's not perfect. I don't have a CNC machine, but uh, it'll it'll do the job being like a support chassis for this, um, which is my iPolar, like polar alignment camera. Works great. I'm going to go ahead and print out the rest of the parts for this. Well, start to, and then add them to it, and screw everything down. Mm. I think I'm going to make the USB hub connector piece first, which just goes right here. Um, and then I'll maybe get this piece and see if they connect well and measure it before I print out the, the actual cover. Uh, while I have this out... Um, you may wonder what this is, this weird, like, protrusion. And I printed some supports in there to get this, because this is actually the bottom, and this is the top, as far as, like, printing. So the filament can't really defy gravity that long, so I had to print some supports and then knock them out. Um, but I didn't have to do it in the corners because the device is not there. And the device is this little 7.5 amp um, buck converter. It's pretty big. Uh, but I wanted one that was all sealed and wasn't going to, like, short out or, you know, whatever. It's going to be connected to my DSLR, so I got, like, a really reputable thing. And I took the metal cover off and just kind of marked it. But this is in, 12 volt in, and then 7.5 out. So that's going to power my DSLR, so I don't have to keep changing batteries in the middle of the night. It'll just, everything will just run off my big battery. Um, I'm sure I could have got, you know, like I said, smaller, but this is a little weather-sealed 7.5 uh, volts no matter what um, goes into it so I think we'll be okay with that but it just kind of sits up in there like how do you do it and just sits up in there like that and then we'll have the bottom cover and the front and then you know it's just gonna be sitting in there it doesn't need to be like super stuck in there I'll probably put some double-sided tape on the back just so it doesn't wiggle just a little add-on. Uh, I decided to just screw the plate on and, um, you know, kind of show you how it would be working. Um, so now the counterweight can actually sit in here and not get in the view of this. Um, I did want it, like I said, I think before to be, like, over a little bit, but I always design things too cramped, and I never really seem to, uh, 3D model the wires right, so I just thought it would be better to leave a lot of space and leave this on the side. Instead of sitting there and like trying to be perfectionist and get that in there, because the view angle would have hit the guide rod anyway that close, supposedly. It's 13 degrees, so believe it or not, yeah, it, uh, it would have hit it. Um, at least according to the model. So yeah, we're, we're getting there. That was the most daunting part was this plate, I think. Uh, the rest of it's just you know 3D printing some covers and everything and wiring it all up, and um, that shouldn't be that hard. I do want to kind of find this connector. Was it like a five pin or a six pin? A six pin, um, so that I can just connect right to it, and not just have to like solder onto those wires or ruin the other connector that it came with. But uh, we'll see. We'll fi I'll find it and uh, order it and get it going. All right. 